we found something to talk about because we did all of our hair and makeup just to do intros and outros and we're like That's we need a to lot. talk <laughs> yeah i mean putting on the eyelashes we did all of our hair and makeup faiza drove all the way to la <laughs> yeah for an hour and whatever yeah which is what it normally takes for me to get down but here still but still so that was that was a lot for like you know all of 15 seconds of filming the other part of the segment is where in the world are pairs on the faiza because <laughs> every week we have a new set <laughs> so we were just talking about competitions and now we are going to talk about competitions and let you be part of this conversation mm -hmm. because we realized this was relevant to professional most professional ballet dancers who are trying to uh get their name out there or trying to improve and whatever you're using competition for so i'm going to start really fast by saying why i enter competition because adrienne made me it was a crazy summer because we had we went to ballet dance of the year where we won duet of the year yes and then we competed in the troop category at hot rocks and we came in uh, first runner up so <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's how it started. And then last year in 2019, Adrienne and I did not enter any competition together as the Ballady Babes. I just entered the professional categories at Belly Dancer of the Year and Hot Rocks. And those are both competitions that I really, really enjoy. It's like the producers are really great people and they give you the feedback fairly quickly so you can see what you need to work on. So that was really good. And I'm just gonna tell you really quick about how it was for me. So at Belly Dancer of the Year, I had worked really hard on this competition piece and I was pretty happy with it. And it was really important to me to like be settled and relaxed and not be like, zzz, 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 swish, 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 swish. So even though I knew I was gonna be really nervous and so I was like, I gotta be calm and I felt really good and I went out and I did the routine and I felt pretty good about my performance. And then I got the uh, feedback. It was worded in different ways, but there was a common theme that I was too relaxed and that my arms just didn't have energy. And one judge said to me, I feel like I'm watching you mark your choreography for rehearsal. So I was like, ouch. But it was a common theme. Another person put it much more uh, constructively. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, it's the relaxed style is good, but make sure it's not coming from a place of like no energy. So it's fine to have that kind of relaxed style, which is, a style that I like. Roxanne does kind of a relaxed style and right. I think is really, really beautiful. And Zara, you've mentioned. And Zara has a very relaxed style. And Zara is who I had, she was the one coaching me for these. Right. So that being said, when I got the video, I saw what everyone was talking about. I really was way too relaxed. There was just not energy being projected out into the audience. And this is what my face was doing. So that was bad, <laughs> pretty much. When I'm in the competition, I'm usually pretty good about my face, but for some reason I was like, this is stupid. And that's why I have never put that particular video up. <laughs> Cause it's really not good. Anyway, Denise was one of the judges and she kind of talked to me a little bit separately. And then I did a section of the same piece at Cairo Shimmy Quake. And I felt a lot better. I took some of that feedback and I felt much better about how I had done it. And so I talked to her at Cairo Shimmy Quake. She was a vendor and she said, yes, this was a lot better, but here, this is what I want to see more of. That's nice. Yeah, she was, she was great. And so I was like, okay, cool, I'll work on that. And then Hot Rocks came along and I did the routine and I felt really, really good about it. And I talked to Denise after that and she was like, that is what I wanted to see. So it was really good because I started out with one competition. I did the same choreography, which is not normal for me to do choreography in the first place. But, right. but when you're trying to like really bring your A game, you want to have drilled exactly what you're going to do and have it be powerful. Though I will say at Hot Rocks in the drum solo, I did end up improvising the whole big section because that's who I am. So, yeah. 
I can't help myself. So, but it was really good because when you're doing one particular thing and you, you can improve it, and so all of those things are still gonna help me in my improvisational performance. Right. So that's what I really get out of the competition is that feedback and getting to meet other high caliber dancers and that kind of thing. So if you want to well, do that was, competition, what? That's, that's something that we talked about and that I mentioned in my interview was that I haven't started competing yet. I'm not new to dance competition. I used to compete in high school uh, because I was on color guard. So my team would go and compete either in field show with the marching band or during winter guard, which is just us to a choreography to pre-recorded music. So I'm not unfamiliar right. with how a competition goes, but I feel like I have struggled kind of moving into belly dance the way I used to in the rest of, like in Western dance, just because there are a lot of elements that aren't good about Western dance that I don't miss when I'm in belly dance. And then there's some elements that, you know, I kind of wish we could bring in. And one of the things is that I need feedback. So a lot of the times I feel like there can be in troops and things like that because a lot of the people here, we tend to, you know, unless it's a professional troop like Jelena's, um, we tend to form troops with our friends. Right. And because they're our friends, we don't necessarily give them the feedback that we need to. This has been my experience, has been what I've noticed, etc. Like I'm really used to a really strict feedback as an actress and as a dancer from competition in like Western dance, being like, your hand was here, I need it here. Because everyone else's is here, kind of a thing. Like that's what I, and that's what makes really good group work. One of the things that we've talked about, both that we were talking about off camera, is that <laughs> because I'm incredibly hard on myself as a person, I would only be interested in competing in competitions that provide you feedback. So if there's a competition where they hand you your score and no comments about what about why, what you can improve on, etc. I'm not really interested in that because I'll just find the thing in my head that I think I messed up on and obsess over that. You feel like the judges might not have even noticed. Right. That's that's it for me. Like I am really, you know, I do want to get into competitions and things like that. I do want to step up my game, but it's just like that, like. Yeah, it is scary. It is scary, but like before you actually do it. And then once you're there and everybody is so nice, and assuming you go to the right competitions. Right. So everyone is really nice and supportive of each other and nobody's like, you don't deserve to win. And at least in my experience, nobody's I just, like that. I also just need to get to the point where I'm soloing specifically, where I am soloing enough that like performing is old hand for me. Right. Because like right now I'm not soloing, I'm mostly performing with troops, so when I do solo, I get such bad stage fright that I want to blow up or leave and not perform every time. So I can't even imagine what it would be like to have yeah. the added pressure of competition. of competition. So Well what how would I hope you... you guys don't think I'm a terrible dancer. I just talk about these things in case anybody else feels these things too, so you're not alone. We all feel these things. Okay. <laughs> we all feel these things. So uh, what I was just going to ask you is how would you feel about competing first at, in a group? Would that make it easier? I feel like, yeah. I mean, that was one of the first things that's so funny. Just because like I've been a belly dancer for 13 years now, but my brain is still so like Western dance that like Davila's troop Sekhmets, I performed with them in the last rock spot that Aubrey Hill hosted. The drum solo was so tight that I was like, we could take this competition. Nobody in the troop is interested in competition, but I'm just like, this was so tight, they couldn't work us down for anything. <laughs> we gotta go. Just like, like, this is what I'm saying, why I think that you would do well in competition because you're competitive. I'm stupid. So, <laughs> so not in the, it will be good because then you will like, stand there and be like, I would annihilate all of you, but just for your in own, head. <laughs> in your head, because I know you, in your head, you'll be like, I can take care of it. I can take care of it. And then you'll be friends with them anyway, but. I know, no, it's <laughs> terrible. Like that's something that I hate so much is in the belly dance community. There's so many girls that are so pretty and are so talented, but then they're good people as well. So like, I have to like them because they're great. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, because, okay, so we were just talking because we were just talking off camera about when I was much, much younger, like 10 years ago, <laughs> about how a bunch of us were young. We were 19. 
we had like kind of just started to get it together with belly dance. Like we were good. You were good. You, you were, were good. But we're like good. we let our egos run away with you. And then also that mean girl attitude kind of came into effect. And like I've never said this to her, but she's like, yeah, I know that you guys knew, thought that you were better than me and that you didn't need me. And I was like, oh. I knew. And you know what else I knew? That they did in fact need me. <laughs> Actually. Which, I, it's okay. I also know that you guys were 19 years old. But the thing so. was, is that even when I had that stupid 19 year old attitude, this lovely lady would get on stage and would perform and just knock my socks off. And just with her grace and her demeanor, and then I'd be like, I was like, I'm pretty good. I should start, I'd see you and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I still have a lot to learn. Well, that makes me feel good that you had moments of recognizing. I had that. moments of humanity uh, <laughs> during my sociopathic teen years. I mean, it's normal. You guys were really good, so that's that's the thing, and that was what we were. We were good. Me. We were young, and we were hot, and like that's, that's the problem. The hotness did cover a multitude of sins. Well, and as Jerry Norman did go and compete, I was not one of the ones who competed. You did play in college. You were, right away? I think you were gone. Yeah. yeah Did okay. you dance with Stephanie? Brought once and she was real mad about it. Do you remember? No. Oh <laughs> my God. Back to competition. That's one last thing that I wanted to say. Actual competition is not just competitions amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know what? That's kind of what the competition is. You, you may get to final and you may get to place and you may get a plastic trophy that you get to <laughs> put up somewhere. Instantly, Hipsa Fury, I always got really nice trophies because that was encouragement. That's beside the point. <laughs> Back to competitions. <laughs> For the, third time. the thing that frustrates me is that in order to get to the finals, you have to do, you have pre-recorded music and you dance to, you, most people do choreography. I right. have done choreography, but the finals are with live music and you find out what music you're going to be, what song you're dancing to. So you right can't before. request a song. You can't be, you can't like. So like, Andali. Because like the band is going to play their version of it anyway. Right. So to right. me, it makes sense to be like, can you play Layla or Aziza? Or so, so Andali sends a list of the songs. That, okay. So she's like, okay. it's going to be Aziza and um, Fakaruni and whatever. <laughs> It's just fun to say. <laughs> just, I'm definitely gonna be saying that all the time. Oh, fuck her. <laughs> anyway, but the thing is, that is where I excel. Right. Is live music improv. Okay, so okay, so because you you're upset that you have to go through choreography, which is not necessarily your strong suit. Yes. So, where for me, like I do choreography, I'm a choreography dancer, absolutely. It's like I would want to do choreography because I would want to make sure that I was getting the most bang out of my buck during the performance instead of me getting nervous and just doing a thinking move the entire time. Like that would just, ugh. But I also completely agree with having to dance with to live music afterwards. Right. To show your breath. Uh, well, I was gonna not be nearly as generous and say to uh, distinguish the real belly dancers from not. <laughs> but that's because being a real belly dancer is dancing to live music. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Netflix has just uploaded a bunch of um, movies by Youssef Shaheen, C-H-A-H-I-N-E. He is an incredibly, incredibly important director for like the golden era of Egyptian right. cinema. My boyfriend and I have the experience of, we were watching one of the shortest ones, um, Cairo Station, which is like the one that gets brought up a lot whenever you read about him. And by whenever you read about him, I mean the 15 minutes I spent reading about him on uh, book Eater. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> so we were watching this and the music just started playing and my boyfriend was like, oh, this is just what they listen to. And I was like, well, yeah. And he was like, I thought this was belly dance music. And it was just your typical, like really beautiful Egyptian orchestral music. I was like, no, this is just what they dance to. And the thing is that back in the day, like Samia Jamal and all the old school dancers just had to be masterful freaking dancers and really good at musicality because the music was just played and the dancer just happened to be there. The musicians did not care. The dancer was there. The dancer better be able to keep up on her and be able to play the rhythms and be able to interpret the music because the musicians were going to do what they were going to do. Um, and it wasn't like they made music for belly dancers like they do now. 
Right. And a lot of the pre-recorded music that we listen to, like even Zena, even the classics get simplified. Like, I love the version of Zena that's off of the Billy Dance Superstars album, but it's very much simplified for Billy Dancers right. to dance to compared to older versions. All of this to say, <laughs> First of all, go watch the um, movies on Netflix by Yusuf Shaheen so that way you can have a better grasp of the culture. I mean, we're knowledgeable. Um, but second, real belly dancers dance to live music and improvise because choreography in belly dance is a Western thing. 100%. It's a Western addition. Yeah. That's not to say that there are no Egyptian choreographers because that's, well, I mean, Right, yeah. exactly. Like, That's exactly what I was thinking of. But it emerged as this person who would dance while the band was just playing. It, like, it didn't emerge as the, you know, dancers coming out doing choreographed pieces. All right, on that note, thanks for joining us for this episode of Rocks Talks. I'm Faiza. This is Parazon. And this tune in next time. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Masalama! Masalama! <laughs>